Let's talk about R style. Having good R style can save you a lot of heartache further on down the road if you're ever sharing code or revisiting your own code. I'm just going to introduce a couple of concepts here. This is by no means comprehensive. The first one is spacing. You want to have spaces before and after assignment operators and before and after mathematical operations. So if we're defining a couple of objects, x and y, we definitely want to have spaces around those assignment operators. Let's say we wanted to define an object z that was some function of x and y. Then we definitely want to have these spaces in there. Another concept to think about is run on lines. It's really easy in R to create these long expressions. So you might remember this expression where we're extracting from the iris data frame the rows corresponding to this species, Cetosa, and the columns corresponding to the sepal data. There's a lot going on here. So here's an expression where we're extracting one column from iris, subjecting that to a relational operator. This whole thing's going to return a logical vector. And then over here, we're defining another vector for the column names. We can clean this up a bit if we put these operations on their own lines. So let's create an object called Cetosa rows, where I'm just creating that logical vector. And we can create another object where we're naming these columns. So these are columns corresponding to sepal data, so maybe I'll call them sepal calls. And then we can put those objects in as arguments to the extract function. And that's going to be a lot more clear what's going on here. So we can see that these are the rows corresponding to Cetosa and the columns corresponding to sepal. So I chose those names really carefully so that they're informative. They tell us what exactly that object is doing. A couple of other naming conventions to keep in mind. You definitely don't want to overwrite important objects like this lowercase c, which is the combine function, or capital T, which is used for true. So I'm just going to delete those. In terms of workspace management, in our studio, you can see what's in your global environment in this environment pane, but if you're not using our studio, you can also use this ls function, and that'll list all the objects in your global environment. Say you do accidentally overwrite an important object, you can remove an object with the rm function. So maybe I want to remove my object y. If I execute that, then it's no longer in my global environment. Now the last thing to mention here is commenting. So I've included some comments which are preceded by these pound signs and those won't really be executed. So if I did want to execute this whole thing, the comments don't really do much, but they can be really useful if you're revisiting your code and you need to remind yourself why you were doing something or what exactly you were doing. So here it's provided sort of an outline for this instructional video.